pues ha gemido mi desgracia y estrechándome en sus brazos juró que trabajaría por mi libertad. Reconcíliese con Dios, mi Lord. Pues debe morir. This is one of the most dramatic scenes of Richard III, the world famous and recognized piece created by the genius of William Shakespeare. Richard III was recently presented in Havana with a positive reception from both the public and the critics. Its director, Yas Martinez Gamboa, is only 35 years old, but he's considered one of the most promising young professionals in the Cuban theater scene. Gamboa moved to London almost a decade ago, when he was 26 years old, to study at the Actors' Temple under the auspices of the great Tom Radcliffe and Simon Furness. Recently, Jazz completed his study at the prestigious London Academy of Music and Dramatic Arts, institution where he obtained a Master in Direction. With him, we speak today in From Havana to go deep into his work and also to know his opinions on today's Cuban theatre. Well, Jess, it's a pleasure for me to share a stage with you, sort of speaking. Thank you for accepting our invitation to be here in from Havana. Tell me, well, which... First of all, thank you to, to you for, for, and you guys for inviting me. So, yeah. Okay, thanks. it's for us a pleasure. Which are your first memories concerning the theater? The first thing you remember about theater? The first thing I remember about theater was here, actually. I was like 18 years old, and I was in the army compulsory army two years and, and then a couple of friends told me about a play that we're putting here, the Celestine, and it was directed by Maestro Carlos Diaz and I came here and that, f that was my first impact with theatre and I just couldn't believe how beautiful everything was and how much fun and I said, oh my god, I, I really want to uh, do this in my life. So that was, that was the first thing that happened to me in theatre. You were an actor, right? Yeah, after that I decided to kind of like um, um, start my first steps as an actor. As an actor. Um, I wasn't that good actor either, actually. <laughs> I couldn't uh, relax, I couldn't... But for me, everything was more like a journey to get as a, as a theater director. Because um, in Cuba at that point, there was no school for, for, for directors, for theater directors. So the only way to become a theater director was either through an acting career or a lighting designer or assistant director. So I decided to, to start uh, uh, as an actor, and, and I remember many times me judging uh, the directors I, I was working with. Uh, some things that I wasn't related with, with, with what I actually was doing was acting and, and my character. So I, when I, every time I look back, backwards, I always think that, yeah, I always wanted to become a, a director. So do you think it's like mandatory to have act acting experience before being a director, a theatrical director? Not at all. Uh, I think if, if, if you start as an actor and, and, and it's really good, and there are many uh, good directors that they were actors before, but I know many incredible directors that never act in their life. So, I mean, theater is art, man. There is no two plus two, is not, it's not always four. So I don't think there's a for formula to become a, a, a good theater director. How do you leave a play? I mean. You are in the backstage. How, how do you leave that not in the stage? I mean, from the outside. Yeah, when, when the play is running, I was in the, in the audience. I was I'm back in the audience and taking notes. Uh, that's that's what I always do. That I think there's always some things that I could just tell the actors that might happen for the next day, because you know plays every night they, they cannot be different. So you've been nine years in in London, mm -hmm. where you have like a really great training in one of the best schools mm -hmm. on dramatic arts and, and, and music and arts in general. Uh, you wrote there Killing Romeo, mm -hmm. you have Loving Shakespeare, you have now Richard III, which is mm -hmm. just played, was played here in, in Cuba. Why, what do you think that Shakespeare has that makes it, makes it really actual? I think he's timeless. I think, uh, if you see every single play in Shakespeare, uh, still now, Shakespeare is always talking about, uh, it's talking about love, it's talking about ambition, it's talking about power, it's talking about unrequired love. So the things that still now, as they were 500 years ago in the human being, and I think it will be in the next 500 years if there are human beings in the world. So it's, it's the human core what Shakespeare is talking about. He's not talking anything very specific. Uh, that it could be to certain um, 
audience to certain country or way of, of living. And it's just talking about the human core that is occupied in Africa, or you could be in Latin America, Europe, Asia, anywhere. But why Shakespeare? Isn't a bold move from you to version in one of the biggest? Yeah, the biggest. I, I think I was young. <laughs> when I decided to, my first play, I was kind of mixing uh, some text from Romeo and Juliet and then putting my own text. Uh, and I, yeah, I think it was a bold move. I think I now I look backwards and I think to I, I think when you kind of if you want a version a genius you either have to be a genius or you either have to be a silly man and I think nine years ago I was kind of like a silly man. <laughs> well, uh, tell me about the experience of directing both British and Cuban cast. There's any difference in it or it's just the same? I mean. They're human beings, <laughs> that's one thing, so, but despite, of, of course, there's, the, there's love, there's hate, they have to look f for the thing, they need to understand the text, but it's all there in humanity, but I think there's some difference. I think a trained actor in, in, in the UK, they're, they're based more on text, so text for them is very easy to, to, to uh, memorize, uh, and, and to say it, they have a, a big school of, of text and language. While here, I think for me, Cuban actors are more related to like movements and, and dance. And I don't say that they could say a good text because they're really good actors in Cuba. But, but I think mainly that's, that's the difference. One is British ones are very into text. And, and I think the ones here more in, in theater is more like movement and, and those kind of things. Well, here in our academics, um, we are like adapted for, uh, to the Stanislavski method. Mm -hmm. You are like a promoter, so mm -hmm. to speak, of the of the Meissner technique mm -hmm. with your workshop. You have a Meissner battery recharge. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's correct. Do you think our schools, our theater schools, are like stagnant in in, in old-fashioned ways to teach? What what's mm -hmm. what's the the health of our theater? In your uh, opinion, listen. I I don't think this, this, the the acting school, uh, well, at least not the Ina, uh, is stagnated. Uh, I think Stanislavski is is the base, is the core of everything. But definitely, it would be good if if they you know they could put some um, I don't know think about Meisner or or Meyerhold, those sort of other uh, acting teachers that of course all they come from Stanislavski because Stanislavski is. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's the master, it's the guy who started the whole thing related to naturalism in theater. But uh, yeah, I, I think it'd, it'd be good if, if, if we could open more um, uh, our uh, way of teaching actors, thinking about uh, other ways. Because in the end, I think, uh, I, I don't think there's just one way to, to teach actors. There are, I think there are many ways. And, and in the end, each actor will decide what works for them and what, what doesn't. Well, uh, is it perhaps some kind of declaration of declaration of intent that in Richard III, you all the cast are women? Yes, yes, actually, yeah, that was very, yeah, I was that was very, uh, that's what I wanted from the beginning. Um, uh, I, I had a group of um, actresses who weren't working. Uh, I don't know why, but in Cuba, I think at least in Havana, there are more actresses than actors. There is a huge lack of actors. And I remember that the last big production in, in the Kike, even in the theater, they were all male. And all the majority of them, they were, they, they were uh, actors. So I wanted to do something with actors. They were really good and, and they didn't, and they were desperate to do something. So that's when I started thinking about Shakespeare, because the Elizabethan time was the whole opposite. So just women weren't allowed to to, to the theater, so just the male was making the, the female and male part in, in Shakespeare play. So I wanted to do the opposite. Uh, 
theater, mm -hmm. how much should a uh, theater contains of um, entertainment and provocation? There's have to be doses of both or more one of the other? Uh, for me, theater is to entertain. That, that for me is the core of theater. Uh, theater is not an intellectual space. Is uh, for me is more entertaining. Now, when I say entertainment, that doesn't mean that it has to be something light, like a soap opera. I don't mean that. Because, you know, if you see Diez Millones, Carlos Adran, it's very entertainment. And it's a very strong and powerful story. And there are many other plays in, in that sense. Um, provocative, that might be, that might not be. Uh, when I when I choose a play, I, I don't think provocative is, is what it comes to me. Uh, it might be provocative or not, but I, I don't I don't I don't choose a play because it's provocative or not. I, I will choose it for all, all, all many other reasons. Do you remember a moment of tension? Not maybe when you were an actor in the stage, but now that you are a director in the crowd watching the your play. Yes, uh, my previous play, Lonesome West. Yep. That was my first play here in in, in Cuba. Um, this meant to be like kind of like a door who was hitting a, 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 a gas cook. And that meant to be revealed in the second act, the second part of the play. I, I don't know what happened, that the actors that they came out to the stage and the play started. And the, the gas cook was already showing there. And, and I just wanted to die, man. I went up uh, um, to the stage and I stopped the play. And we needed to do it again. We need to fix the whole thing, and, it, and I needed to apologize to, to the audience. But it wouldn't work if we just if they would carry on with the play. You are like totally satisfied with all your work. I mean, you have to split yourself in in all the characters on the stage. When you are an actor, you, you're just focusing on your character. But when you're when you're directing, you have to you know split yourself. You are totally, totally, totally satisfied with how people take your work to the stage no I, I don't i don't i think i've never been totally satisfied with any of my work um, um some are, are some are better so not and not as as good as as other ones but I, I no i totally satisfied no i've been satisfied with many works that i've done but totally no totally it's, it's too total to be <laughs> satisfied i think in my opinion you uh, have plans to keep on the Shakespearean line on your work, or you're working on something different um, these days? I'm, I'm working, um, well, I, I want to do it. Uh, I think my next step here in, in, in Havana will be to do a trilogy, and trilogy, sorry, uh, about um, insanity, about uh, mental issues. So I got an idea of this ne next uh, three plays, and Shakespeare is now involved, but I'm sure I'll, I'll be back. On him at some point. Well, the crowd. I think the crowd is it's a big part of, of a play. Mm -hmm. It's the Cuban crowd is a hard crowd, or you've seen the hardest crowd. Uh, I think I think it's hard the, the Cuban audience in the sense that, or, or, or for what I do, no, because um, I think the Cuban audience is difficult for uh, for them when there is a lot of text. Well, in my plays, there tend to be a lot of text because my plays are usually based on text. And that's, for me, the core of, of, of my work, the text. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I think the Cuban, it's just a thing of, of uh, education, you know. I, and it's about uh, having a theater where there should be a classic plays that it should be. I think every country should be a theater which is just destined to classic plays like Shakespeare, Chekhov, Ibsen, Vigilio Piñera. Um, and, 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 and we're missing that here. And I think because of that, uh, is the audience are not so accustomed to those sort of uh, two hour plays where the whole time people are just talking instead of maybe dancing or doing a choreography or something like that. How is the process? I mean, if you have to write the whole thing, you have to produce the whole thing. How is the process to, to come up with a, with a play? Here in Cuba? 
everywhere. I suppose every, every place is different, but here uh, I try to choose a text that I that when I read it, when I'm reading it, I can't stop reading it. When I'm very fond of it, I say this is the one. Um, and um, it depends as well in the, the time of my life, how I'm, I'm feeling about certain things. Um, but that's usually what happened to me. And, and as well, and I, I've learned that uh, you, after you're choosing what you wanted to do, you have to think as well about the audience. Because there's no point for you to, I don't know, to do something that you think might not work with the audience. Because I really think in the end, directors and the plays are to meant to entertain and, and to the audience. And I think the play is in the end for the audience. It's not for me or for the actors. And I see many, not many, but a few directors, a few actors that they say, oh, this work is for me. Uh, oh, I have fun on the stage. I don't care about the others. I think that's just silly. That's stupid. I think theater is for the audience and people need to enjoy that. Enjoy doesn't mean to laugh, could be have a tear. But that for me is the most important, the audience. The Do you prefer to write the play or version? No, I, I I wrote my first two plays, which is very, which is very bold, and and when I went to London and studied, and I dis and I then through that year I discovered so many incredible playwrights. I said to myself, why are you writing plays if you're not good at it? You know, like there's so many good plays that you could put on. So then I, I decided just to, to become a theater director, just to focus on that. Maybe one day I write something, something small. Again, I, I might write something again, maybe for Q, or something small for a certain audience. And, but mainly, no, I, I think, no, I, I'd rather to choose really, really good plays that I could really get a lot from. <laughs> in London, the city with maybe the most density of theaters mm -hmm. in the world. Mm -hmm. Do you think we have the potential here to improve our, uh, let's say, theatrical circuit here? Listen, I, I honestly think that the theater in Cuba, in Cuba is right now is not in a, in a, in a good place. Theater in, in Havana, I would say, in general in Cuba. Uh, but I think the theater here know that that is not in a good shape and we, we're trying to, to do something to, to get it better. Uh, they just kind of finishing a master, two years master, to, so for a young directors, that, so probably those young directors will come now with something new and fresh. But I, I think, yes, I think we, we need to, to, to work hard as people who work in theater. I think it's very important to 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 explore different things, to to look for new writers and around the world. And I know it's different with the whole situation with the internet and, inform and, and to get information, which is difficult. But I, I think we need to to expand ourselves a bit more than our reality, because I don't know the Cuban reality it, it sometimes really drag drag us into something that it gets into a hole. So sometimes it's good to just to step your head out and, and see what, what's outside and what, what, what other things we can do. And how important is, from your uh, experience, to leave another experiences, I mean, to go, to study outside, to see another way to make uh, theater, for, to improve that, that way? I think it's great, man. I think every, I think it's a bless. <laughs> um, that, I think it's a bless that a person could just go to another reality, go outside his own reality and see other ways of doing things and then coming back. And, and I, I really hope that, that we in Cuba could really see that as a plus, that people could go out and come back with, with different ideas about what they want to do. You know, I, I think that's, that's absolutely wonderful if, if you have the opportunity to do it. You have like a paradigm in your mind. You have like a like a role model in the way you work. You you think about someone. Yep. Well, 
my role model is Pier Paolo Pasolini, but he, he wasn't a theater director. He was a film and writer. Uh, he was a, a bit of everything. And I, I love him. He was bold. He was yeah, very he was uh, real bold and, and, and yeah. outside. He was thinking outside of the box. Yeah, very the outspoken and all of that. I think for me, he is. I think he's. I think he's all what I wanted. I want to be. You know, just he was so brave and so smart and so incredibly talented. He was a genius, that man. You know, he could write. He could write and something really good, and then he could make films and. And and he he just didn't care about about what society or, or the church or or politics would say about it. He would say, "This is what we need to talk about, and let's talk about this." And he was doing it. So I, for me, he's just the top. <laughs> it was the perfect match, uh, the perfect uh, combination of, of silliness, as you said, and boldness and and and, and geniuses. Yeah. Well, you never thought about making that jump. To the theater, to the TV, or or movies. Yes, a bit. Uh, I'm, I I kind of wrote a, like a short film, but I hope that maybe by the end of next year I could shoot the short film. Uh, and I kind of got the actors as well. <laughs> it's incredible. But I just need to pull everything together. I, I yeah, I would love to to direct films at some at some point. But you know what, man? I, my passion for theater is huge. I love cinema, but that thing that theaters have, that this contact with, with the audience that is all happening there at the moment, and you cannot reproduce that. The next day is going to be different. That's something that for me, uh, that's something that I really love. There's any play that you said, man, I wish that I'd come up with that, not him, but me. With a, a written play, that's something yeah. that I could write, something that I could write. And you saw, that you went to a theater and you saw it and you said, man, why, why wasn't me the guy who come up with that? With that idea? Oh my God, there's so many of them. <laughs> Just pick one. Pick one. Uh, this play that I work in now that I'm translated, which hopefully will be the next one, is called People, Places and Things. And it's about uh, an actress who is a, a drug addict and alcoholic. And it starts with, with the scene of the seagull. And she's playing Nina, and it's such a good play, so clever that I was like, "Oh my God, <laughs> why can't I write things like this?" You know. <laughs> well, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to be in this this time with you, in a stage where you fall in love with theater. I hope we get another opportunity to, to talk more because time is so short and theater is so big. Yeah. It was a pleasure for me. Thank you so thank, much. Thank you so much to you. Thank you so much to you and the rest of the crew for for letting me be here. Honestly, thank, thank you. you. So thank I you. I feel like very um, wow. Feel um, I don't know how to say it, but I feel very uh, gracious to you guys. Okay. Honestly.